Hey guys, Level Cap here. Welcome to another episode of Sniper Sunday, the series where I play the Scout class in Battlefield 1. We talk about sniping tactics, weapons, and other things to get better at sniping in general. Now today, I thought I would mix it up and try out the hardcore game mode and snipe in it. Sniping is very, very effective in hardcore game mode, mostly because you can't be 3D spotted, so hiding at further ranges really helps. There's also no kill cam, so after people are sniped by you, they won't see where you're hiding on the kill cam. And in addition to that, if you don't use a sniper rifle with scope glint, then it's going to be very hard to see you, uh, if, especially if you're not moving very much and you're far away from your opponent. So uh, it's a great way to play the sniper class. It's very, very effective, probably more effective playing the recon class in hardcore mode than in other modes. Also, one of the main perks is the damage bonus, which allows you to one shot kill with most sniper rifles at most ranges. Granted, if you do not hit a torso shot uh, or you hit like some arm or leg shots, you will not necessarily get that one shot kill. So you kind of have like a sweet spot at all ranges, provided that you hit like a torso or head headshot so uh this the recon class all around has gotten a huge buff and it is just an absolute blast to play in this game mode now arguably the m95 really is one of the best rifles to use in the hardcore game mode it doesn't have a sweet spot mechanic which makes it kind of t tricky to use in the standard game mode but in hardcore since that doesn't matter as much it is a very good sniper rifle that being said, I decided to use the SMLE because I have this cool new legendary camo with uh, camouflage on it, which totally helps me blend in. I mean, I'm sure it doesn't really do much at all, but even in this situation here, very few people were finding me and returning fire. Now, strategies for playing hardcore are fairly similar to normal game mode, but just more extreme. You want to stay at range more commonly in hardcore than you would in normal game mode, just because you are going to be so disadvantaged in close quarters. That being said, using the M1911 in close quarters is still very powerful, provided that you have the drop on your opponent. A few shots can take down your enemy, making the 1911 a very, very powerful close quarter weapon. The thing about this game mode, since most of the intel goes out the window without 3D spotting and certain gadgets like flares are virtually useless because they can't can't really do any sort of spotting for you whatsoever uh, there's a lot of camping in the game a lot of hiding on points a lot of hiding around points and if you walk in trying to capture a flag with the recon class you're really not going to have or sorry the scout class you're really not going to have a lot of weapons to deal with uh, random threats that pop up your best bet is to keep a distance and pick off targets from further away scan the environment find those targets and take them out I actually do like the element of visual camouflage that becomes available in hardcore mode. 3D spotting is so powerful in the standard game mode that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to try and blend in or stay still at further ranges. But in hardcore, that does become a viable tactic. Granted, I still do like to bounce around a little bit from habit to make sure that other snipers don't find me, but if I find that I'm in a spot where I think I'm really well concealed or hidden, then I will try and stand still so that uh, other people just don't see me and I can take my time scanning the environment. Now, I've been so effective as the scout class here that I actually just ran out of ammo with my sniper rifle, so I go kill a support class, take his weapon, put down the ammo box, and reload. That's uh, how you can get ammo in a pinch, especially if your teammates are ignoring you. I found on hardcore mode especially, I could not get a single support class to drop an ammo box for me. Now, part of the limited user interface in hardcore is also not having a kill feed. You can't see who your teammates are killing, and at first you might not know if you're even killing your opponents. However, if you listen to the audio cues in this game, there is a little sound that sort of sounds like a change from a register or something like that. Um, and when you hear that sound, that means that you got a confirmed kill. So that's basically how I was able to track through my footage and find the good clips with all the kills in them and also understand when I was playing if I shot and killed my target. If you don't hear that little change sound but you see blood go flying, it doesn't mean you got the kill. So you're going to have to come back in there and finish them off. Also at the beginning of this clip you'll notice that I accidentally shot my teammate. Luckily didn't kill him but that's the other thing about hardcore is you have to watch out for friendly fire and the thing that makes it harder than previous games of hardcore like in Battlefield 
Battlefield 4 or Battlefield 3 is that the minimap no longer shows you friendly. So not having that minimap there to see uh, if the footsteps outside or around you are friendly teammates, it can lead to a lot of friendly fire. Playing the scout class means that you're probably going to be further away from the action more often, so the friendly fire incidents should be less, but it doesn't mean that they're not going to happen. Of course, I was friendly fired a bit, and I accidentally killed a teammate at one point, but it was because I was shooting at an enemy, and my teammate was like through a cloud of smoke, and it just happened to kill him. So you got to watch out for it, but even the good players, the people who know what's going on, are going to friendly fire every now and then, and it's important to sort of remember that the UI makes it complicated in this game and to be more forgiving and don't rage out in the chat. The developers have been fine-tuning the way that uh, friendly names pop up when you look at teammates and sometimes it works really well and other times it doesn't work as well especially with a bit of fog or such stuff going on. Uh, there was even an instance where I was aiming down sight directly at a teammate and I was thinking like huh his name should be popping up he might be an enemy about to pull the trigger and then sort of remembered what my teammates camos look like and then held off on it you know so there are UI bugs still and that can be a common occurrence for friendly fire. Now playing on Amiens is a trickier map to go with the scout class. It's still very effective. I still had an incredible KDR while playing but uh, it's usually better to actually stick to the buildings in this map as it gives you a bit more cover. If you're on the streets, you kind of stick out like a sore thumb. Not moving isn't really going to do you any favor. So playing on the bigger, more outdoorsy maps are definitely more beneficial for the scout class. That is kind of common sense, but uh, especially on Amiens, you can do well with the recon class there, or sorry, the scout class but uh, it's just not the most ideal situation. I often talk about playing weapons to their strength or even classes to their strengths, and some classes just don't do as well on certain maps. So you can always try and modify them to play a bit better. The Scout class does have the M1903 Experimental, which functions more like a DMR than it does sniper rifle. So you do have a little bit of flexibility with this class in terms of trying to modify it for the situation at hand, but mostly you need range to be good with the Scout class, and if your map doesn't really facilitate that, then you might want to think about picking a different class. Now, Ballroom Blitz is actually a pretty good map to play the Scout class, and especially if you get up on the second level here on the uh, Giant Palace area, you have a great higher up vantage point if you're killing your targets and they are not seeing where you're attacking them from then you can just stay up there all day getting a little tripwire bomb putting it at ladders is a good way to watch your back especially on hardcore mode so there's a huge amount of benefits to playing ballroom blitz granted going inside with this class is a little bit more risky uh, and you'll notice here that i have to get a little bit closer to my opponents than i really want to but uh, i'm just trying to be a bit more aggressive and help my teammates push the point which uh, they were able to eventually get. Now there's a few things to remember about uh, scope glint and that's important for hardcore mode, especially if you wanna avoid scope glint. If it's foggy out or raining, you should not be getting any sort of scope glint whatsoever off of your magnified optics. Um, and then if you're using some of the marksman optics like the one I have here, this one doesn't produce any scope glint. It's only if you start using some of the sniper variant scopes uh, in which you will be getting that scope glint. Granted those scopes do help you be much more precise at further ranges but if you want to try and avoid the scope glint which is going to basically give away your position to snipers uh, infantry tanks airplanes basically anything um, it's a good way to try and conceal yourself and it's generally just my philosophy when playing on hardcore um, if i am playing on normal mode then i will take advantage of some of the higher powered sniper optics as the added accuracy is pretty fun now something that I see people mention or ask questions about in the comments with my sniper videos is why don't I stay aim down sight after I fire. Uh, part of it's through habit, but the other part is that uh, it's actually a good technique for uh, avoiding tunnel vision. People who remain aim down sight the whole time while they're pulling back a straight pull bolt on certain rifles that have that as an option, uh, it, it'll give them tunnel vision. They won't notice people sneaking up behind them. If you have a nice high resolution monitor like I do, you'll be able to see enemy movement in the distance even if you're not zoomed in. So zooming out, it'll give you a wider field the view you can see what's going on and decide where you want to zoom into next so it's just a good way to go about doing things every now and then i'll remain zoomed in if i'm 
trying to get one single target and I keep missing my mark. Anyway, sniping in hardcore mode is ridiculously effective. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend trying it out. It's even better than in normal mode. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.